Hey guys, how's it going? Ghostly Rich here today. We're here again with Canadian Cruising. Be sure to go check out his channel. Thanks again, Kyle, for trusting me to help you with your lift today. And so let's get right into this. It's a, again, a 2023 Nissan Frontier. We did this front bumper, so you can always go and see how that's done on the channel, including installing the winch and stuff if you'd like. Jumping into this, as you can see, we have a whole suspension lift by Dobinson. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and quickly tell you they offer you a really sweet option from them, and that is for the front. What they allow you to do is order an option where they assemble the front and actually set them for your vehicle and the lift you're doing. Again, you can always fine tune this when getting your alignment done, but it at least gets you to the alignment shop. I would highly suggest you do that. That's enough on that shock. I could go ahead for a long time, but if they give you the option to just assemble it and set the coil over aspect of it, say yes, let them do it. It'll get you to the alignment shop. Look at the beauty of these control arms. And these are the rears. We have all our components here. I'm gonna show you from start to finish. First thing you're gonna need is either a rattle gun or you're gonna need yourself a bar. Do not do this when the tires are off the ground. Do it when they are on the ground. Makes your life a lot easier. Reverse, go ahead, put it on, and just make sure they're just broken loose. You don't want them out. Just like that. And I always put them back in a little bit. And go just to the fronts for right now. Don't bother with the rears, unless you want to. You could go ahead and do the rears if you're gonna lift all four corners, but I would do fronts and then rears. And now, the other thing is, if you look up there, you're gonna have your safety. Make sure if you have a safety lock, you find that first, because you're gonna need it for this project. Again, break that one loose just the same and then do that on both front tires, and then I'll show you how to lift it. We lift this up, let's tell you what this actually has from factory so when we're done, you know how much it actually lifted and true. From the ground, we're looking at about 34 and a half. So 34 and a half. From the center of your wheel, roughly, is about 20 inches, that's on the front. So 20 there, perfect. And down the rear the ground you're looking at 35 and a half inches and from the middle roughly again about 20 and a half 20 and a half perfect now one quick thing for you to realize now we didn't tell them this and again this is something that they'll do depending on the shop you take it to when they're going and balancing everything out that adds a lot of weight so it is going to sink the front down a little bit more than your average truck because again that is a lot of weight on the front end now. That, what would you say? That's probably three, 400 pounds? A couple hundred pounds at least. Yeah, so that's gonna, that's why they have it adjustable. So you can bring that up and make up for that difference. Just something to remember if you have a heavy bumper like this and it looks like your truck is sinking a little bit and you had paid for them to make the adjustment is that will make a little bit of a difference with the extra weight. Once we lift it, it'll level out on the jack as you can see, but what we've done, we're using these two padded spots right here. And as you can see, I jacked it up off the frame. We're gonna go to the other side, jack it up, same way, right there, and put the jack stand underneath just like that. All right, we've decided to just take off this side for right now. We're gonna leave the other side to help hold the steering all together for when we're actually pulling everything apart. Again, if you want to, lift both sides of the front. I'm gonna attempt with just one jack stand for right now. So just for safety reasons, now that we have the tire off, I would highly suggest this ABS line, just pull it towards you and just do that. You can fully disconnect it. It shouldn't drop more than that, but if you're worried about it, all it is is a duct tab up here. You just squeeze and release. I think this is gonna be way more than enough. And if we're really worried, there we go. That's plenty. Just keep it away from your spring. Anyways, now that we've gone ahead and done that, this is done. Let's go ahead, grab this cotter pin with a pair of pliers, and we're gonna bend it straight so we can pull it through the crown nut. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, see this? You bend it straight, and then now, or as straight as possible, you start to work it out with this. It has to be extremely straight, otherwise it will not come out through there. And you might need a hook pick or a flat blade to shove through there to pull the cotter pin out. As you can see, it's still crooked. You can always cut the back off to make it easier, but it just pulls out just like that. Now, 
If your truck's pretty old, this is where you would take a bunch of penetration fluid, shoot this over here with a bucket underneath to catch it all, and let it soak for a second because these will seize up nicely. We're gonna take it off the control arm first. Now, something to keep in mind. This is very heavy. Don't try to hold this as it comes down. Take your jack, put it right here on the bottom of the hub, so that way it's got it, and when you, we hit this with a hammer in a bit, and this drops down, then it's not gonna just take the whole weight onto the control arm. As you can see, I've got the jack right under the control arm, but I have a space. You need that space, so that way when you hit up there with the hammer, it has a place to drop marginally down, so you know it's actually separated from the ball joint. 22 on a breaker bar, go ahead. That's tightening it. I always like to tighten it a little bit first before I loosen it, I'll tell you exactly why. It helps break any rust or tension. But, again, now look how easy that was. Again, I could almost do that with my fingers. I can do it with my fingers. Oh, I like working on new trucks. Okay, if your truck is if you're watching this and this video is like three to four years old and your truck is three to four years old, good luck. That's all I'm gonna say. It won't go down that easy. And then, now that we have that out, technically, we should be able to... I took some of the angle out of it by lifting it a little bit, and as I'm hammering it, I've seen the control arm, now that it's straightened up, pop up a bit. So. That's another trick for you. If you lift it a little bit, so this is more perpendicular, I think that's the name for it. Once it does that, go ahead, smack this again, really hard, and here, if you want, start to lower it, and let's see if it comes down. Oh, look at that, bang, done. So if you're dealing with this and it just won't release, just so you know, this is a ball joint separator. All you would have to do is put that in between the ball joint like so, hammer on the tip, and it will separate it for you. But in this case, we didn't need it. If you want to, you can take out your inner fender liner. If you don't want to, all you do is you squeeze your ratchet there, it's a 19, and go ahead and take it off. It's gonna be nice and tight. Might need a breaker bar again. I just had to use both hands, and after I did, away she comes, a little bit of squeakiness. But if I were you, I'll leave it up to you. You could uh, take out one side at a time, or loosen one, then go to the next, and loosen that as well. Make sure to put a box wrench on the other side once it starts, so that way you can completely pull that bolt out. We're gonna go ahead and pop the fender liner out. What you need to do first, Phillips, Phillips. If we go up top, Phillips, Phillips. And one more right there, another one right there, right there. Go ahead and remove all of those. As you can see, we have a pop clip right here. You can go ahead and start to work it out. Make sure you're even with everything because they will try to break, especially once they're old. Once you get them half out, you can usually get them with your fingertips and wiggle them out. After that, there's probably one more screw maybe on this one. Who knows? There. You're not putting that back on. So now that we have that out, there should be probably, oh yeah, there's one more right up here. And then there's one more definitely over here. And we're gonna see, there might be one more at the top. I can't remember. If there is, it's right there. Yep, there's one more right there. So once we take out that one, the one over here, and the one over here, we should be able to remove the liner. So right here, pop that screw out. Another one, let's see if we can pop this off. There. There. Again, these clips might break one or two of them. You might have to replace them. But by doing this, now we can get this fender well in and out way easier. So, let's take a quick show here. There's two more screws right here. There we go. Oh, no, that's just me being crazy. There we go. Look how much easier that is now to get that out. So, the fender liner is out. I'm gonna try on the other side to not remove the fender flare. We'll see if that works, but I have a feeling it's gonna make it a whole lot easier to put it back in by not having that on there. So, we're gonna go ahead, remove the last bolt, and then our control arm will be free. 
All right, so what we might have to actually do is pull the steering shaft on the driver's side only because this bolt will not come out with the steering on the angle that it's at. How we'll take care of that, we loosen this and slide the bolt out. Now, very important to do this, what you're also going to need to do is tie off the steering wheel because you don't want the steering wheel rotating. So what I would suggest you do, you could do it to that mirror right there. All you do is drop your window and tie off the steering wheel, then tie it to your mirror so that way it can't do a full rotation. As long as you do that, you'll be able to line that up properly. Since we have one wheel still on the ground over there, we don't have to jam anything on this side because that will not turn unless that wheel's turned. Like I said, just like this, wrap it around, wrap it around your mirror. That way you can't have that steering wheel move. If it moves a little bit, not a big deal. It moves a full rotation and now you have problems. So, and that's just because a lot of these are key hold or key weighed, so we will see that. It really should be. Can't see it not be. So, let's go ahead and take a 14. We're gonna take that and loosen that bolt. Once the bolt's out, move it up. You squish back with your thumb and see how it's free. Ta-da, and watch this. Ugh. Now, you'll be able to push it into the boot a little bit and get it free and out. When we go to put this back in, we're going from the other way. And the reason why, you'll never have to pull that steering shaft out again. So if you want, for right now, you can either leave it out or I will have more than enough room. I would just put it back in and then you don't have to worry about your steering changing. This is in the way, but as you can see here, there's actually a notch in the shaft. So like I said, as long as it doesn't do a 360, you can't mess it up. Once you've got on ahead and you've uh, slid this back in, I would go ahead. Now, on most vehicles that I've done this with, this part, that 14 is at about 40 foot pounds. When you're using your torque wrench, if it doesn't look like this, it has a little screw lock. Make sure you always lock your torque when you're tightening it down. And again, just proof, 40 foot pounds. I don't know why I've waited this long, but go ahead and lift this out. You can see there's our two bushings and our new control arm is gonna look so good in here. We'll compare the two side by side in a second. They're all cracked loose. We'll go ahead and we'll just take them out. Now you're wondering, Rich, why did you pull out the top first? The reason why is next thing we're gonna have to do is probably loosen our sway bar so we get more travel. And then to make sure that we've got enough or the spring fully, um, we'll say unbound, we don't want it to be under tension when we pull this bolt out. Because if we do, then that'll launch down. What you want to be able to do is drop this control arm down enough so we can drop the bolt and lift it out like that. To make sure we do that, sway bar has to move because this limits your travel. If I'm lucky, this will just come out with a rattle gun. If not, we'll break the tension loose, it'll start spinning, and we'll have to slip an Allen key in here and use a box wrench to get it out the rest of the way. This is definitely one of those parts where they can seize up. And if they do, you're gonna need to have a lot of penetration fluid on there. So let's go ahead and see if I'm lucky today. And I'm lucky today. Now our sway bar is loose. Now what you can do if you want to is go to the other side as well and you can loosen that so that way the sway bar is swinging free. You can take this one out if you want. I'm just gonna also pull up the end link because now if I remove the end link, there is no way I can't drop the control arm and we can do it side by side. We don't, can, or as one would say, one side at a time. <laughs> All right, now that we've got that out, now we should be able to move that end link out of the way. Again, if these are very old bolts, just be careful because the uh, end links have a tendency to seize up. If they do, you're gonna need a torch, you're gonna have to heat it up, and then after you heat it up, more penetration fluid and try again. I don't have to do that in this scenario because this truck is still fairly new. Drop it on the jack. And again, you might have to push down a little bit, but there, it's exposed and it's free up here. We know it's not under tension. Go ahead and we'll pull this out. Again, this bolt, if it's seized, make sure you use a little bit of penetration fluid. As you can see, Kyle is holding that up there. I am down here. I'm gonna loosen this bolt and you're gonna make sure that that doesn't fall out. That broke the tension, but there is a nut on the other side now. I need to put a wrench on that side so we can loosen this out. See this? Make sure there's still some play in it. You don't want to break your brake. Isn't that ironic? Anyways, so I got it out. Literally, as soon as I loosen that, 
the bolt came out and the whole thing <laughs> fell out. <laughs> like, I couldn't even film it for you. So as you can see, it's free. Take a look at the difference. We're gonna put that one next to it. That's awesome. Just a wee bit more. We're about to put this in. See this rubber? It aims to the engine bay. If you don't do the rubber to the engine bay, this won't be cambered or chamfered, whatever you want to say, to the right angle, and it won't sit flush, it could cause issues down the road. So make sure the rubber nub right here faces the engine bay. Rubber again towards the firewall. Go ahead, put it in just like that, and line it up just like so. What I would suggest you do now is if you have a friend like I do, get this started, and actually I might even be able to do this without that. Where's my nylocks? There they are. Thank you, friend. Oh, I'm gonna drop some on the floor though. Make sure you get more than a couple threads in and just get these started so it can hold it. You don't, I don't wanna leave that much tension on the brake for too long, so that's why I just wanna get these started and lined up in the holes and go from there. Okay, go ahead. Lift it up, just a little bit there, okay. Go ahead, pull up as you can see on that sway bar that pulls down the control arm and then you can love tap that through. Once it's past the sway bar, celebrate. Once you get it to there, make sure you give it a couple of love taps with the reinforcement stick. You know you have the right suspension bolt when you go to do this. See this? You have full threads. The suspension one doesn't. It has a little bit of a nub first. So, again, you can do this. If you have any problems trying to get it in there, take a pry bar. Let's show you. All you do is you put it like this and lift up and it'll move the control arm down and the sway bar up so you can slide that bolt in gracefully. Now that we've gone ahead and done that, we're just going to put minor tension on this bolt. That way, when we put it down on its own weight again, then we will tighten it. But for right now, we just want it cinched up. If you so wish and you want to, go ahead and use a little bit of blue Loctite. Don't use red. Or the next time you go to do this, I won't even say what you'll want to do to yourself. From there, once we've gone ahead and done that, You'll just come up here and take a look. These three bolts are there. Our rubber bushing piece is still to the end that I showed you. And now we can go ahead and again, lightly thread these in. I would actually just cinch these ones down all the way. All you do is you keep jacking up until this is firmly seated. You can actually go around here with a flashlight and make sure that that's all fully seated against the metal piece. These are not a lot of tension and these are on nylocks. There's no need for any blue Loctite, and there's no way, unless you are max traveling these, will those loosen or back and out. They're not really doing much except for making sure this stays completely seated. But don't do the bottom one until the vehicle is on the ground. It allows the bushing to seat. Again, this is completely up to you. If you just wanna go Johnny crazy, go ahead and... What we're gonna do is we're leaving the end link for right now. The reason why is we wanna get our control arm in. Once our control arm's in, we can actually just leave this on the jack and this will hang here. We'll put in the end link at the very end because if you try now, well, it's still attached on the other side. You won't be able to do it. So let's go ahead and let's get this control arm. Again, these control arms are not cheap. Let's get some of these really nice billet ones and show you. As you can see, we have both control arms here. Only one kind of will line up pretty well with it. And how you know is the Dobinson right here goes to the firewall. This goes towards that shock area and it gives you clearance. That's how you'll know the difference because if you bolt the wrong one on, see how this one's gapped too? You'll have that too close to the shock area. And again, the Dobinson's goes to the back of the truck or the firewall. We have to take about five millimeters off of the front driver's side mount right here. That's what they're calling for to make sure we get full clearance. Probably gonna be hard to show you, 
but we went and I did it. It's in line with the bolt on this side and just a, this bolt, since it sits a little lower, it's not quite in line with that one. So let's let that focus again on my cut. As you can see, there is no uh, upper space anymore, just like their picture, which you get with your control arms. It'll show that there's a little piece of metal right here. You have to get rid of that piece of metal that comes up the side here. So make sure it's fully leveled. And like I said, if you have a measuring tape, do it to five millimeters on both sides. And by doing that and then putting it across and shaving that out, you, that should be more than enough. If you're like me and you live near the ocean, you can see I shot some black paint in there and it's roll bar paint. And the reason why is the last thing you want is that to of course start rusting. So at least shoot one coat of paint on it after die grinding. And again, if you want a paint brand, I just use roll bar paint and this is VHT. Before you put this in, take a caliper. These are cheap, you should get one there even on Amazon. And put these between 31 and 32, or in my case, you have to choose 31 or 32. It literally is, uh, that's your choice, 31 or 32. And if I flip this around, I look down there, it says it's at 31 right now. So I'll just put it to 31 on both sides. You have to do it when it's flat against the workbench. Make sure these are sitting flat when you do this. That way when you tighten these up, which you should do, just chat, tighten up the lock nut just like that afterwards. Now we can lift it into the vehicle and we'll do our precision stuff once we get into the vehicle. But at least get it to this point. Again, caliper on the back side, 31 to 32. They're literally one turn off from each other. Make sure these rubber bushings, these big thicker ones, are facing the inside. Bolt in from this side towards, and then the nut is on the steering shaft side, so that way you never have to drop the steering to do suspension again. Over here, again, bolt goes through here, nut on the inside, so nuts are to the inside now. From here, you should be able to lift this, go ahead, push the knuckle up, and then we'll lower this down and we'll put that crown nut on. Then, after we do that, I'll show you, at least get this started and then get at least five to six threads on that crown nut. Now, one last thing, if you wanna be nice to future you, some people do this, some don't, you could throw a little bit of anti-seize on this bolt. I'll leave it up to you. From there, like I said, all you do is you aim this up and then sink your control arm down. You'll see how easy it is. It literally just slides right in and start to screw this in. Now that you've got that, make sure everything is nice and kind of loosely fastened. You don't want it to be super tight right now. What we're actually going to do is bring up our suspension now so that way our suspension is a ha halfway of travel. By doing so, what it's going to allow us to do is put some tension on these bushings and that way it's going to move the bushings in the proper fashion. If you just go and you go at the lowest point in form, you don't actually lift your control arm with any tension on it, the bushing could over rotate and they will void your warranty. So if we take a look right here, what they want you to do is measure from the top of the guard, for me I have the guard off, down to 55. That's exactly where we're at now, that's mid travel. From here, we can now put these bolts all to torque spec while there's tension on them. As you can see, what you're gonna need to do is, again, lock it in just like we took it out. And this one goes to 94 foot pounds. So hopefully you eat your Wheaties and go ahead. Ah, one more time. There, that's 94 foot pounds. This one right here is 58 on the ball joint. Oh, almost there. Don't forget your cotter pin to the back. Funny thing is, is Unless this actually backs out, it's, yeah, it's, <laughs> that ball, it's not going to do much for holding that crown nut in. So, we'll actually bend these up and we're done. But the crown nut still, all this is meant to do is if this crown nut loosens, this won't let it. So, you can do two things. After you've brought this up that much, you could go back down one turn if you so wish, just so the cotter pin locks this bolt up. Again, it's completely up to you. I'll leave it up to you. And if yours capped out sooner, go ahead. And all you gotta do is um, make sure that 
You always tighten it a little bit if possible, so that way it lines up. Now that you have your sway bar out of the way, and the control arm is down on this side, we're gonna, again, bring it back up to 55 on the other side after we're done, but put the wrench on the other side and put it to 150 foot-pounds. Now, I also went and found some Torx specs. It calls 22 on these top bolts. To tell you the truth, wait till you put it at 22. Um, I put mine at like 13 foot-pounds, and at 22, they didn't even move, so I'll leave it up to you. Anyways, we've got this one down here, just did it to 150, now gonna go to the other side. So, cool thing for the passenger side, as you can see, you don't have to remove the fender liner. That's the first thing I've noticed so far, and I'm sure there'll be more. So what you do is leave your jack pad on there, loosen and bring your jack down, and then you just mate both sides, whatever you do. Don't tighten these, put the nuts on, put the nuts on here, and then we'll move this up and down when we crank these down, but you need to move this up and down to get both them in. It is really, really hard. Trust me, if you don't uh, loosely put both sides in first. So put this one in, and then go to the other side, and then use the jack to move this up and down to move the sway bar up and down, so you can slip the other side in. For the end links, 62 foot-pounds on both of them. Now, I should mention this. Some factory places will tell you, change the end links every time they're removed. I will leave it up to you. I don't usually do it unless requested to. The driver's side. These are both in at 62. And now we've got the fender liner in. I didn't bother showing you because it literally just slides back in. You uh, get it up here and we'll go ahead and sink it back in with the push clips and all those Phillips screws. So we've got that one back in, the one up here and the one right here. Those are gonna be your three annoying ones. Now that those are back in, before we do much more, go ahead and put a 10 on here and a 10 on here and just cinch those up. Do not go ham. You just wanna basically have it so it squishes that clamp closed a little bit so that way the uh, camera adjustment and whatnot is all locked in. And again, if you go too ham on it, you could snap that bolt or it'll make it more annoying when you go to adjust it later. Just make sure you tighten it down pretty good. If anything, I'd probably put 13 foot pounds on it max. Um, now that we've gone ahead and we've done that uh, and you've tightened those down, I'm about to do that next. Uh, one last thing, if you take a quick look back over here, see how it's touching a little bit? This gets adjusted during your alignment. So when you're getting your alignment done, they'll make sure that you get that clearance out because they're just gonna square off your tire and all that other fun stuff, okay? So don't worry too much about this. Just make sure you get that alignment done before going off-roading. You'll be fine on the pavement. On the passenger side, we're perfectly fine. Here, we're just kissing just a little bit. So when they're doing your alignment, they'll just spit that out a little bit and you'll be fine. Again, that gets done during the alignment. So let's go ahead. Again, we've already got that pin in, that push pin in, and that push pin in. And now it's just time to put a couple more down here on the two corner ends. And we'll go ahead and snap our fender back in on our driver's side and put those Phillips back in. End up breaking any of the Eclipse. What you can do is use a little bit of isopropanol, clean up the area. And then what you do is use a bit of crazy glue and glue them back on. You can also use shoe glue if you want to use more time. But again, there's always a chance that the clip breaks off and it's the only way. And next time you take it off, chances are it's going to break again. Even if you buy a brand new one, chances are you're going to break the clips again. Look at the gap difference. Like it's huge. We just measured, it's about three and a half inches, but you'll notice the most once you start driving on it. Cause what's gonna happen is you'll drive on it and it's gonna settle. When you first put your suspension on, it takes time to reset itself. So I'm gonna stick that fender back on in a second, but if you wanna see the completed look, take a look at this side. And you can totally see those beautiful billet control arms with the teal. That's going to turn some heads for people that are walking up and looking. They'll be like, oh, wow, he's got the billet ones. <laughs> Next is the rears. One, two, three, four, five. And don't forget your Phillips at the bottom. Once you do that, torque your wheels down, put them to 100 foot pounds. There you go for the rear. I went on the middle of the frame here with the jack stand pretty much in line with the door or the jack itself. And then the jack stand is farther back. I'm using both 
So it's actually lowered onto the jack stand, but just sitting on the jack. So that way, if for some reason the jack fails, then it's gonna catch it. Anyways, from here, just do what you did before. We already cracked the nuts loose again. Go ahead, remove the rim. So now that we have the tire out of the way, as you can see, I've got that sway bar perch right there on our jack. So it's like that. And the next thing we need to do is pull out that one right there which is the bottom of the shock. You can reach it from either way, just like we did before. We're gonna loosen off the nut side, and then once it starts spinning, we'll go ahead and put our box wrench on. Just like that. Again, just pull that bolt out, and just be careful just in case it drops at all. I'd probably loosen both shock bolts, that one there, and then going up, to the top, we'll pull it out of the frame up top. And take your ratchet, feed it behind onto the shock bolt, just like that. And there. Again, you're gonna feel it's not as tight as the one down below because it's not a nut and bolt. It just goes into the frame and you don't wanna strip it out. Literally, it's just a nut. The washer comes off, suspension off. You'll be able to just slide the new one's eyelet on and we'll put the nut on. But first, before we do that, let's get these leaf springs out of the way. All we do is we loosen up the four bolts on the bottom so these cradles let go. So give me one sec to get that ready and we'll show you loosening the big U-bolts. Like I said, four bolts. There we go. You can see that that one's now free. We're gonna go to the other, and we're gonna take out the last one over here. After those bolts are out, literally, this should just come out. And this, just let's go with that. There, literally just four little bolts, and the axle is free. The leaf is now floating. If your leaf is touching, go ahead and lower your jack a little bit so it's not touching. From here, now it's just the two bolts at the end of the uh, leaves. Be careful, these leaves are heavy. Take one side out, let it sit on here, and you'll probably want a friend on this side holding it while you take out that bolt. Because I'm telling you now, you'll feel it, they're heavy. This side, I put it on the breaker bar, it was still giving me some guff, so I tapped it with a hammer just to get it loose. Now I'll switch the ratchet, we'll pull up this single bolt here, and up there you can see there's the carriage up there. So we need to release this leaf from the carriage, so that way we can change that out because it's all gonna change with the lift. In there, you can see we took half the cradle off. So the next thing to do is to pry against it and get this side of the cradle to slide off the other end. By doing so, as you can see, it's coming out, which is great. Once you have the one that's closest to the cab out, then you should be able to wiggle that one literally out like we were doing. And let's see if we give this a little tap. Yeah, she's seesawing in. Now we'll try to maneuver that other one's bolt out and the leaf is free. After you twist her all about, go ahead, go back to the where the back bumper is and slip this out. Now, you'll be able to slip the leaf in. So we'll, remember this, put the leaf in first when we go to do this. You'll see your spare tire here. You slip the cradle in and flip it up and go in. All right, so with this kit, you get new U-bolts. They're a little bit bigger than the old one, but they do work for the heavier duty or springs. You have new rear shackles, and if you notice, they got holes in them, along with a grease nipple on the end. That's because these are fully greasable. That's why I decided to go with this kit, especially off-road. It'll stop squeaking and all that stuff, and it'll last a little bit longer. And then for the other side of your leafs is the new bolt as well, like I mentioned. And again, has the hole because it's fully greasable. So that can be all replaced. And then to go with everything, you get new bushings for everything. These are a lot harder. This is Delrin plastic or whatever you want to call it. And they're all different sizes. So if you look, you get two of these fatter guys. They'll ma match up together. And this pin or spacer actually goes in between. And it also has the holes. So when you could put it with the bolt here, when you grease the bolt, it'll actually force it through here, come out these holes and grease this portion. 
So the fatter parts are for the front of the truck. And then for the rear shackles, you get two sizes. You get two long ones and two shorter ones. So when you put these together, you can see they fit on the top. And then again, you put two together, they fit on the bottom. So the bottom goes straight to your leaf spring and the top is where we pulled out the bushings out of your frame. That's where the longer guys go. And then of course, being greasable, everything works together. When you force the grease into here, it pumps it out and it'll grease the inside, the outside, and the actual interior of all these bushings. So the best thing you can do is lift the leaf into the vehicle first. Again, how you'll know which one is forward is the Dodson goes towards the cab of the truck that goes towards your tail lights. And how you know is the big opening. The big opening goes forward, the small opening goes to the rear. So let's go ahead and lift this in and we'll go ahead and show you from there. All right, guys, let's go ahead. We're gonna pump, oh, a little bit overzealous there with my stream. There we go. You just wanna do that. Go ahead, grease these up. You're gonna make a mess. I'm using gloves because if once you get grease on yourself, you'll know. Slide that in, grab another biggie, and see if I can get it on here. I'll just clean the handle of the grease gun after. There we go. And again, apply our grease. You can add the one in the center now. I wouldn't bother. You're going to apply it anyway when you put the centerpiece in. So you don't forget. We need to put the metal silver collar in. Where did they go? On the box. Oh, there it is. Perfect. <laughs> need to make sure that you don't forget this. If you do, your bolt will go right through the bushing. And again, we're just going to pre-grease these even though we will have those knobs on afterwards and the bolts. So just like that. And just slip it in. And let's see. There we go. Got a vacuum happening. There. Okay. That's it. There. And now we'll do the two at the rear. So, again, now we need the two smaller ones like so not the big ones leave the other two big ones for the other side we'll go ahead and we'll add a little bit of grease here try and keep as much foreign matter off so that's why i'm keeping my grease gun tip off and my hands off so that way i can do that put some of the extra inside and again now shorten stubbies to right here There we go. Again, we'll put a little bit in the center hole just to get it prepped up. This just goes right there. Perfect. And now, not that. Now it would go on to here. We won't add that yet. And the reason why is because we need to put this into the vehicle first. So now that you've gone ahead and done this, I'm just actually gonna prep the other sides one as well. So that way both sides are prepped up. I'm not going to show you me doing that same thing again. As you can see, we've got our nipples on there. These bolts are fully greased all the way around. It's going to add some. If you really think I don't have enough on here, you can go ahead and add more to yours. So we're going to go under the truck and slide it in just as it came out. And that's basically it. It hangs lower. So once they're greased, go underneath. You've already put your bushings in. Get ready to get covered in a whole lot of grease. And we'll see if we can do this around the exhaust. I'm gonna actually go like this and get it started and maybe we can flick it down. Oh, yay. And just like that. Oh, there is your greased up piece. Now we can at least lift this leaf onto there and we'll just safely, we won't bolt it down yet. Protector brake line. Let's make sure 
With this side, we'll pull this out. You just need to turn it sideways. Just wiggle it back and forth and get it loose. See, that's what I'm doing. Oh, there she goes, maybe. Anyways, just do that and she will pull out. That, make sure that's free, just like we did with the front wiggle, pull that out. At that point, we might as well disconnect the sway bar end link, so that way we get some more travel out of this axle for being able to put it in. So, again, just uh, this either 18 or 19, we're gonna quickly loosen it out. So, as you can see, what you gotta do is keep the tension off. We've already broke it loose, but it's spinning on there, so you have to hold the uh, inside of the sway bar link and then go from there. We decided to take the sway bar off, but to do so, make sure when you're taking this out, I just wanna put this kind of back in, just like we did up front, See how this is like this? You need this to be perpendicular once again and in line. Don't do this with this cockeyed because if you leave it straight, then you don't have to worry. If you do this when it's cockeyed, good luck. You're gonna need that Allen key in there. So you'd have to put an Allen key on the tip and then take the bolt out. Again, if yours has been sitting for a while or you've been off-roading a lot, you're gonna wanna make sure you soak this for a while in a PB Blast or whatever you're gonna be using. Um, for me, I use liquid wrench, but soak it, leave it. If you want, add some heat. And when this is in there, uh, it was as easy as getting that clip out once again. And that clip is just, all it is is you pull out the fin. It's got a natural spring to it because it's bowed. So when they slide it in, when you slide it back in, you need the bow to press against the metal. So that way it holds it nice and stiff in there. If you put it on the wrong way, well, it won't hold anything. So from here, have one person watching your lines. You don't want to go too much down and break your brake lines. Ironic once again. So we're going to loosen it and we're going to watch it. And again, that side's got to go in there and this one we got to line up down there. So we'll loosen it a little more and how's our lines? They still look oh. loose. Yeah, we're good. Right there. Okay, perfect. And as you can see, now we're low enough. If you don't take that end link out, you will not get low enough. Put the big plate on, you might have to get somebody to twist that so you can uh, line that big long plate washer up. Now, spring washer nut on each one. So again, spring washer, just like that. And again, I know the lighting is gonna be brutal. So again, spring washer nut, and then do the same with up top. Do not tighten anything until all bolts are in. Loosen the jack, drop it down, grab your leaf string and pull it forward. When you do, you'll put it underneath the cradle and then slowly jack it up and into place. Make sure you have a pre-greased bolt to slide in. So literally, as I said, lower the jack, it'll come right down. And then this, since it's on a kind of a swing saddle, you'll be able to push it forward. Take the grease fitting off the bolt, slide it in. And like I said, you'll just have to use a pry bar to help line up the eye so you can slide it through. But it just takes a bit of time, finagling, just use it and slide the bolt through. From there, spring washer, nut, leave it like that. Just cinch it up, but do not tighten because we need to, again, let the truck be on its own weight before cinching this stuff up. If you go ahead and just crank it down now, the bushings won't sit right. We got the shock right here. What we're gonna do is grease the two bushings that come with it. That way they're nice and done. Should be about just like that. You can see they're chafered or cambered, whatever. So that way they sit like that and squeeze to the inside of it. And you just want this greased up so it moves nice and smooth while we're setting it. And yeah, so just go ahead, grease them up, slide one on, slide the shock on, slide the next on. Get to put your two zap straps on, take your side cutters, trim the uh, tails off the end of the zap straps. That's your dust boot. That makes sure that dust doesn't get on the shaft as it goes up and down. And of course, wears out your shock a little faster. So with that dust boot on is much better. First one, make sure it's aimed like this. So the chafer is towards the exhaust system. And now we just slide that right on the rail or the boot. Now we can take this shock, which again, Keep it uh, like this, so you have the name of it sticking out. And we'll just slide that onto the bolt, just like that. And then next, I'm gonna need the other um, bushing right there, which I'll grab. 
and hold into the shock up here. Oh, and again, so this one faces now that this one faces us because again, we needed to curve into it. So it, see how it's like that? It curves into the shock. It needs to squeeze into it, if that makes sense to you. I'm sure it will if you're doing this. Okay, I can feel now that it's squeezing into the shock, so we're nice and good. Now we'll put that onto the back. Now we put our nut on. And again, if you wanted to, you could throw some Loctite on here. I wouldn't bother, we're just gonna put it to torque spec. And again, it should say IMS on the outside Dobsons. That's how you know your shock is facing the right way. So see how it doesn't mate yet? That's okay. So we've got this ready to go. We're not gonna put those U-bolts in yet, but what we are gonna do is line that up, jack it up just like we did with the spring until that sinks in right there. This is why we had to do this after putting in those bolts. Lifting to put the shock in, make sure that that alignment dowel goes in. If not, just, you can horse kick it a little bit and it will go in. Just be careful. Do not use a pry bar here because if it snaps in, you're gonna land it on your pry bar and then you're back to normal. Anyways, uh, get that there. And then once we have that lined up as you're compressing, line your shock up and in. And that's it, once our shock is up and in. Now if you start doing this and it's lifting the other side, you can drop your jack and put it right here if you need to. And if you put it right here, that's fine. It's gonna, you'll just have to drop the jack all the way down, be very careful, watch your brake lines, put it here. And as you're lifting, just line up that eye hole again. Not clean up your plate, this just goes. See there's a little knob just like you had down there. This goes in, sits like that, that's what keeps your leafs together. Now that we have this like this, we need to go actually drill out the other side that was down here that we took off because our leaf springs are a little bit thicker so they probably won't be sliding through that plate. So we might have to just make them just a tiny bit bigger. As you can see, just put a step bit on and then just use that. Just keep stepping it until it'll just fit. Just like that, holds it to the sides. Now you can take this, slide it up from the bottom, put your washers and your nuts on it. Once you do that and you've tightened those down, take a look at that. See how these are sitting even right now? And what we've done is we've put the nuts all even. We need to tighten this in increments. And this part, you don't have to worry about. Since this has an alignment dowel, it won't actually be moving. We can actually bolt this stack down right now. It's just those two, or three bolts through here and the two shock bolts, which we'll do once we get some weight on the actual piece here. This itself we can start doing. And like I said, we're gonna go and we have to evenly put pressure on as we go down. So like I said, we're gonna go in increments and we're gonna watch and monitor. You want it to compress at the same rate. And it's about, just put it to 55 foot pounds on each bolt. So, as you can see, I just hit it here, and all I've been doing is rotating like you do a tire. You don't just go all in one go, you just, you switch it up now and then. Once these both have been torqued down, cinch up all those bolts. Again, don't torque them down with any sort of torque. Once we've done that, we can put the wheel back on. We're gonna just snug our wheel on, and we'll tighten up everything once the back end is on the ground. So. Let's quickly go ahead and put the wheel back on. So we're gonna have to go ahead and drop our spare tire and the reason why is we just don't have enough room since it's shimmied a little bit over this way. So whether it's the passenger or driver's side, it's probably sitting a little bit over to one side. You won't be able to get the leaf spring out. So with these brake clips, see this? And yep, pop up and you wiggle. And let's see if I can get it right away just so I can show you there. That's how they come out. Make sure you squeeze them in the same way. All I literally did after we dropped that spare was roll it, spin it, and out she came. Now we can move this out of the way, get that shock out of the way, and put in our new parts. I'm gonna show you again on this side because 
I can probably give you a better viewing angle. As you can see, we're in the shackle. The shackle is in. But right here, we need to line that up. So you can actually pull the shackle, as you can see, forward. So go underneath the vehicle, see it? Now look up and line it up with that hole. And then slowly lift it and direct it with the pry bar. So that eyelet lines up there as it's lifted like so with the jack. All right, let's give you some torque specs. The top right here of the chalk is gonna be 33. The bottom is gonna be 150 again. And then if we go over here, this one should be 84, the big ones. And then those two on the back are gonna be 74 each. Again, don't do it now. Wait till we get the rim on. Once we have the rim on, then when we have both tires seated on the ground, we can go ahead and crank those guys down but you need the weight of the vehicle on them so that way the bushings are set. Take a look at that. Looks great. Now to get underneath and put everything to torque spec like I just told you. Put those in, do the sway bar last, and after you get your sway bar in, then put your spare tire back on. I wouldn't do your spare tire until after you go ahead and get all your torque specs done. For your sway bar end links, make sure you loosely put that bolt on like we did with the front. Once you do that, Tighten them down, snug them down. After you snug them down, 62 foot pounds on each side. Once you've gone ahead and done that, I'll leave it up to you if you wanna do the brake line clips and put those back in there. Just be mindful that if you ever get a lot of travel, I notice it does get pretty tight. Again, um, it doesn't say anything from the factory or anything that I've read about it breaking the brake line, so I'll leave it up to you if you wanna leave them loose and we'll go from there. Anyways, I'll back out from the truck here in a sec so you can see the difference. I'm gonna go just tidy a couple things up under here and that is it. Just make sure that you've gone over them once, twice, if you have to, three times. Remember, 77, 77, 33 top shock mount, 150 bottom, and then up front is 85. And then those U-bolt mounts, I already told you, can't remember off the top of my head right now. These little grease fittings, they are four foot pounds. You can always convert that to inch pounds if you have an inch pound wrench. But again, just realize that they're very tiny and don't break them. If you even use one full hand strength, you're gonna snap them. We already measured the fronts. We can always measure the backs and see where they're at. But I must say, holy smokes, you will notice the difference. Now, right now we have that raked look because of the fact that that bumper is so heavy up front. Um, because we have the winch and everything that I showed you at the very beginning. So if you remember from the center to the fender well was like 20 and a half in the rear and, and we're 39, which were 38 and a half in the front, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we gained the, roughly there. Yeah. You're looking at about 25 inches. Wow. 24 and a half. There we go. So that was definitely our uh, three inch lift right there. The ground is pretty much 39 and a half. Wow. Yep. So we gained equally um, up front and rear. About what? You're saying three and a half at least? About that. It'll yeah. settle a little bit. We haven't driven it around. Exactly. Yet, but fresh off the boat. Yeah. That's what you're looking at. And there you go. So if you're looking for that three inches of lift to three and a half inches, we'll see once it settles, this kit will do you well. I have to say, I don't know if we'll still see it shining. Those are the nicest control arms I've ever seen. Look at that. And you get to see them as you're driving around with the teal springs. I have to say, really, really nice piece. They cost you a control arm and a leg, but I mean, they're well worth it. And again, go check out Canadian Cruisin's video on this and of course everything else that we've done on this truck as he's done parts of it on his channel as well, as well as if you remember the Mustang I had on here a long time ago. Anyways, I'm rattling on. Have a great evening. It was a really long day today and this video is probably going to be pretty long. Thanks again for watching. Press like if it helped you out and subscribe for more.